Hey everybody, how's it going? Friday night in the shop. What a week. It was a tin marathon for this guy this week. Uh, doing the last push before Christmas in my line of work, sheet metal. I'm in the housing industry. We, we give her. Just before Christmas, it's usually a sprint. So uh, if the tin man looks sleepy on film, it's because he is. Uh, I'm still going to be here for you guys though, that don't matter, but uh, so yeah, just bashing tin like it's on sale for $19.95, so hope you guys had a good week, a productive week, doing whatever it is you do out there, and uh, I had a great week, uh, David, I uh, appreciated yakking with you buddy, uh, always meeting new people on uh, through this channel, good people, uh, I, I got to yak with a fellow named David, and uh, he's Good fella, it was, it was my pleasure buddy, uh, get to make your acquaintance. So it's Friday night in the shop, uh, got a few things planned for, for tonight's episode. Literally I just got off work <laughs> with my sheet metal jacket. You guys have asked about this jacket, yeah I know. It's <laughs> I reach into uh, sheet metal uh, takeoffs and I gotta put the crimps over, right? So. I, uh, I'm bending the tabs basically and so I reach my arm in there and it, and it cuts the jacket so it's uh, it's just one of those things guys it's uh, <laughs> they look like this after a week or two so don't worry when the time is right and we're going uptown I will pull out my Canadian plaid you know yeah that's right the Tin Man has plaid you know, it's for going out in a boot, you know, uh, moose hunting or, uh, you know, when you're going uptown to the bar, eh, uh, you got to put on your plaid. Otherwise the people look at you a little funny. So, you know, <laughs> there you guys go. That's my best Canadian accent. Is that what we really sound like? I reckon it is. I just don't hear it. Okay. Um, what'd you guys think of that 562 video? Um, that's a song I get a lot of uh, questions about quite quite regularly and uh, I, I, I got that saw I think I got that saw just when I started my channel and I thought ah that would be that'd be an interesting saw um, to do something with on the channel well of course back then I wasn't I wasn't in the same space I am now so I didn't film that saw on the channel um, a few of you have asked me just give me two seconds here guys A few of you guys have asked me, how did I split those cases? You guys see this? Okay. There. It's a piece of channel. Okay. Right here. With two holes. These go over the bar studs. Okay. Two sockets. And then that's just a focus. That's just an Allen key or an Allen bolt. With a little knob, you could grind that on with a grinder, it doesn't matter. And this goes on the end of the crankshaft and you press the cases apart. So, there you guys go. Again, that tool from Husqvarna is worth like a um, hundred and something bucks up here. And I mean, uh, I would love to build more 562s. I really like that saw. I know it's either loved or hated. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a lover of the 562. And... Uh, so, uh, I would like to do more, but I mean, to, to purchase a $130, $140 splitter that only works on a 562 for this guy, nah, I'm too scatterbrained for that. So, I just made one, and uh, it, it works fine. And I think I'm, gonna, I think I'm actually going to slot that where the bar studs go so that I can slide it backwards and forwards, and so that it'll, it'll get right on the end of the crankshaft on any saw. Because that splitter just flat out works. So, uh, for those of you that asked that, I'm going to pause you guys here. I got a little question for you folks. I got something here that I've had for a while and I, I was digging through my junk. So, I was, I was digging through my junk pile here, folks, and uh, I come upon this and I thought, interesting. Um, what model is this? Does anybody know? It's definitely a Mac. Didn't even know I had it. Uh, the rest of the parts are in a parts bin. Um, a fellow passed away 
And um, I, don't, I don't know the fellow, but the fellow tossed away in one of the towns. He was a friend of my buddy, and uh, he, uh, we were helping his wife clean out the shop, and, and this was in there, but it was all ripped apart, and, and, uh, and uh, so I ended up with it. And it's all there. I got all the parts. I don't even know what it is. Uh, I'll bring you guys in closer here. Maybe we'll do something with this. It's definitely a Mac. It's one of those. I think it's a mini Mac or a. How can I identify this here? Power saw. There's no stickers on it of any kind. I think it's a Mac. I don't know. Comment below, guys. Is that a Mac? <laughs> I think it is. Be funny to make an angry little uh, topper saw. Anyhow, I just thought I'd show that to you guys. It's kind of neat. I thought it was neat. It's, uh, I'll put you guys back on the mount. It's, uh, I think the, uh, oh no, the clutch isn't stuck. I can't remember. It's got. It's got compression. I think it has spark. I don't know what the deal is with it. I think somebody disassembled it um, to maybe do some carb work to it. And uh, I don't know what the deal is. Anyhow, guys, I just thought I'd show, share that with you. Kind of neat. Always nice to have a top handle saw. I do have a 200T, but uh, I, uh, I, don't, I don't use it much. Um, I know everybody wants one and... You know, but uh, it's such a handy little saw to, when, you know, I got 14 acres here or 13 and a half. I can never remember what size it is. It's yonder, you know, yonder, hither. We'll walk around in the yard again sometime, guys. Uh, it's it's really handy when I'm mowing. You drive around with a little 200 between your legs. I got that Kubota front deck and uh, just grab it. I fire it up and I'll, uh, I'll cut hedgerows from the, from the deck of the mower. Because that mower is fairly high. I don't know if you guys have seen it in any of the videos. But uh, that 200T, it's such a handy little power saw. But I, I really don't use it much. I use it like one or two days in the spring. And then uh, she just kind of sits. Might have to pull her out again and make sure she's uh, ready to go. Uh, I rebuilt that saw on the channel, I believe. Like last year. Um, anyhow, I digress, guys. I'm a little... Scattered today, I guess, but uh, that's the way she goes. I want to talk about a few things. I want to show you guys a few things. Um, the Echo. Uh, are you guys ready? I'm going to share stuff with you. Um, I want to get you guys porting. Now, all, I realize all of you aren't going to port, but th those of you that want to port, um, I want to show you that it is doable. Um, I know. You watch a video on YouTube, I, I remember doing this when I started porting power saws. You, you watch a, a Tin Man or an Iron Horse video, hopefully, and uh, you, you get out to your shop and you're like, okay, I'm ready, and then you go, oh, what do I do now? I want to make a video series for you guys that slows it down a little and, and shows you, uh, I'm going to grind on film. Uh, I think I did a little practice shooting last weekend on just a junk cylinder. Just to make sure, I want to put out a good product for you guys so you guys can see. I think we can do it. Um, I probably won't grind the whole cylinder, but you know, we'll we'll, we'll do a transfer and, and show you a stock transfer and a modified one. I, I think what I'm going to do, I would like to break it down by port. Okay, I'll grind the exhaust port. I'll grind the, the, the lower transfers and I'll do the intake port in separate videos so that you guys can... You know retain the knowledge um it's one thing to watch a video but you know sometimes by the next day you might have only retained some of it so um so that's what's going on there guys i want to show you guys something here this is actually the reason why i turned the camera on but i'm just flopping my gum skis so the end of the last video i mentioned that i thought this had a 266 piston in it this is not a 266 piston. It's not a 268 piston. It's also not a 670 piston. The Echo 670 piston, uh, you guys, all, I don't have one to show you guys. The transfers have a little bridge in here, okay? I'll show you guys right here. 
I'm still upset that I shattered this. Oh, the horror. It has a little bridge like this, okay? You guys see that? On both sides. And it blocks some of the air. So my thought process was to go to a 266 piston. Um, don't mind that. This was a prototype. I can't remember. I did this for something. It's, uh, it's pooched. There's a scored piston, guys. Any of you guys that are wondering. Focus. There we go. That's what a scored piston looks like. So this is a 266 piston. Now notice, and this, fl this, this falls in line with the porting series we're doing. It's not actually part of it, but remember, the transfer air comes up and flows through here. Now the less restriction you have, and you guys can see that's nice and open, the less restriction you have, the more airflow, and usually the more power, okay? So that's why I was talking about doing a piston swap. So this, I think, uh, I didn't have a chance to look this week, guys. I was gonna do that look online. I think this is a 680 Echo Piston. If any of you know, comment below. I'm always learning. No one person knows everything, and I'm definitely not the person that knows everything. I know what I know. But so, but you guys can look. Tell me they didn't uh, open up a Husqvarna and have a look-see. These are dead ringers. The curve at the bottom gives it away. This piston is not stock, though, and it's been cut, so... Um, I don't think it had the curve. This, this is a 266 piston. 268, this is in here. This is what they call a full skirt piston. This, the 268, actually I have one, guys. Uh, I have a piston, I'll just show you. Uh, what do we got here? Right here. Here, guys. This is actually a 272 from the 272 turd saw we did way back when. So there's a 272 piston, same as the 268, 630 piston, or yeah, 630, 266, all that stuff. Okay, so uh, this would be preferable if you were going to port and you're going to do a piston swap. Now, the question is, why do you do a piston swap? I'm going to move you guys back here. Piston swap, rather. I'm going to move you guys back and uh, we'll talk about piston swaps. That's what we're going to talk about today. I feel, I, I get a lot of emails and you guys ask good questions. And when I get enough of them, it's on my brain. And uh, I go, you know what, let's do a video. So why would you do a piston swap on a power saw? Well, sometimes for squish reasons. Uh, the Mac, guys. And yeah, I've been doing things to this thing. Um... I'm doing, I'm actually doing prototype work to this Mac right now. I have ideas. Whether they work or not, we'll see. But, uh, for instance, this Mac, if you could swap this piston to one with a taller crown, maybe you could fix the squish on it. If the squish is too tight, you could machine a pop-up like this one has, right? So, that's why you do piston swap, number one. Number two, wait, okay? That 272 piston, and I don't have my gram scale here, so uh, you'll just have to take my word for it. Um, that 272 piston is bigger than this 266 piston. I bet you it weighs the same or less because of the open skirt, right? So weight, uh, lighter weight and a better flow. If there's nothing blocking the transfers, you're going to get more flow, flow, especially when it's ported. So, and if you guys look... This wrist pin is super tight in this piston. Um, if you guys look, and I'll bring you closer in. There we go. Okay, so we could do this to this power saw. I'm not going to though, because I made the promise that I'm going to make this saw. I'm going to do a port job that any one of you can do as long as you have a timing wheel and basic grinding tools like a Dremel. Okay. If you look, this is how you, this is how I compare pistons. I put the wrist pin through both of them and compare heights. Stock, stock, this 266 piston is slightly taller than this 670 Echo piston. 
Okay, this is machined down and it's at about the same height. So realistically, if we wanted to lower the compression, or if we wanted to raise the compression in the saw more, and we'll, we're going to go into that in the porting series, why we would do that. So just, I could teach you guys the how, but I think you need to know the why, because if you know the why, you'll figure the how out pretty quick. But basically, if this crown of this piston is taller, we just simply machine it back till we hit our 20 thou squish or 25, whatever we're aiming for. Okay, so this piston would work in this saw and this skirt is shorter. Well, what would that do? Intake timing, guys. You'll get more intake timing out of this piston without grinding on anything. Okay, so I wanted to clear that up because I mentioned, I said, I think this has a 266 piston. It does not. I think it's 680 echo. So, um, so yeah, in the next video, uh, we're going to grind on this here cylinder. And uh, it'll be fun. I I'm happy to do it for you guys. If I can do anything to help you guys, my way of, of giving back is my time. And if I can make you guys videos that help you learn, I'm going to do it. It's, it's just that simple, guys. So... Piston swaps in a nutshell, it's just that simple. Uh, measure the wrist pin if it fits. Check it out. Make sure your rings don't end up in the intake port when it's all the way down. You don't want your rings to pass your intake port generally. I don't like that. Make sure you don't free port on the bottom of the piston, meaning the piston travels past the exhaust port. And if, it, if that all works and your squish checks out, you're good to go. Um, that's sometimes how you get an old power saw running. Now, the problem is with Max. A lot of you guys are emailing me. What about this? What about that? Uh, Piston-wise, some interesting ideas. Uh, Nikki Walsh has been emailing me this week. He's got some interesting ideas on how to fix Max Squish. I've been thinking about it. Uh, no ideas are too crazy, guys. Uh, you know, And I mentioned that to him. I said, hey, if you don't think out of the box, you never... You know, you're, you're just going to do the same old. And uh, that's what this channel is about, guys. I do things the way I do them. Maybe some of them are wrong to some of you. Maybe some of them are right. It's just the way I do it. I see other guys doing other things. I don't take much notice to it, guys. I'm, like, if... My rule is, how does the saw run? Does the saw pull chain? Does it sound good? Does it run good? Is it tunable? Does it last? If you want it to last. If you don't want it to last, then that doesn't even matter. Um... How you got there, it don't matter to me, guys. Um, I'm not that guy. So, and think about it. That home light I built, I'm in the mood to actually do another one just because um, uh, I want to recreate my numbers, guys. And, and, and make sure, because I've only done one like that. I wrote down everything, though, and I mean everything, guys. Every spec on that saw is in this book, in the magical Hillroy scrapbook. Okay, every spec on that power saw is right there. Um, I'm going to do another one in the future just to quantify my results. And uh, that'll be good. That'll be fun. I want one for me. <laughs> Although I'm sure Bucket would like one for each hand. But uh, maybe I'll have to do three then or four. But uh, yeah, that's what we're doing today, guys. Um, I really didn't have much planned today. Just wanted to say hey. Um... You know, yak with you guys. We're just hanging out in the shop on Friday nights. That's what we do, right? And uh, did a lot of shooting in the last couple weeks, guys. Uh, I got some falling uh, videos. Been doing a lot of falling, a lot of cutting. So be good to show you guys some of my saws that haven't really run on the channel. Uh, I pulled the saw out. It's the first. I pulled out a saw. It's the first power saw that was ever on this channel. Second power saw. That's ever on this channel from years ago. And uh, I pulled that out the other day because I thought it was fun to revisit my own work. And uh, remember guys, every saw that's been on this channel, except for a few, is on this shelf. Uh, I do that on purpose, guys. Um, I like to revisit my own work and say, was that saw as good as you thought it was a year ago or two years ago or whatever, right? And... Uh, I like to revisit my work because saw, some saws that 
I thought ran good a year ago. I run them now and I still think they run pretty good. So it, it, it quantifies my qualifies, qualifies my thoughts on some of my saws. So, um, that's the deal there guys. Another thing, I'm sorry guys, I'm still not taking any work. I gotta say it, uh, I'm not taking any work guys. <laughs> uh, I know you guys, you guys just keep emailing, emailing me and twisting my arm. I would love to build saws for all of you. I just can't guys. Um, it wouldn't be fair to the channel. It wouldn't be fair to what we've created here. This is a fun channel. Uh, I got nothing to sell ya. I'm just doing my thing and uh, I like it that way. Uh, I think it keeps it more fun, open and honest if I'm not building power saws for you guys. And uh, maybe in the future we'll do some, but uh, as of right now, and I've said this before, and you know, um, I'm not really taking any builds, just a few for my buddies, you know, and, uh, and whatever I do on this channel. And uh, the, the deal here guys is, I wanna show saws that aren't on YouTube or rarely on YouTube. I want to give saws love that are rarely on YouTube. I want to work on stuff that's different, okay? Obsolete stuff. I want to get these Max running, guys. It's all I can think about, in fact. That and this are the two things that are running my brain right now. So, uh, I want to give Max some love. And I just, I want to work on saws that I can't just Google you know, how to do this, how to do that. I think it's important to share this knowledge because once I put it out there, guys, it's there forever and you can go back and refer to it. And, and I like that. Um, you know, I've spent so many years of my life pulling wrenches that, you know, even at my age, sometimes I forget the things that I know. Uh, you guys know what I'm saying? I, I take for granted some of the stuff that I know and and uh, getting questions from you guys, I go, wow, I, yeah, I guess so, or I guess I overlooked that. So, um, like piston swaps, you know, stuff like that. So, anyhow, guys, Friday night in the shop with the Rambling Tin Man. <laughs> Love all you guys. Super glad that you're here. Let's just keep having fun. I got so many things planning right now. I don't like to show things until they're actually moving, but we got some cool stuff coming, guys. I wish I could tell you guys everything that's going on in the background right now, but there are so many cool things going on. And uh, let's just keep growing the channel and uh, let's just keep having fun. This is a trip, guys. Thanks for hanging out in my shop and uh, I'll see you guys again. Take her easy. You guys were like, is he going to say take her easy? Yeah, that's right. Take her easy. I threw it in there. Later, guys.